Hi everybody! We've been seeing a lot of people having trouble reading their, their hydrometers, and you know what? I don't blame them. It was confusing for me at first too, so we decided let's just make a short little video and show everybody how to do it. Hi, I'm Brian. I'm Derica, and you're watching City Setting. To learn to grow and brew, and to take control of your food, hit subscribe now and check out the other links found in the description below that you might find helpful. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is tell you, if you think you don't need one of these, this is called a hydrometer, think again. You do. You can say, I don't care about the alcohol content of my brews. And you know what? I don't either, really. That's not why you do it. I've had so many people in our group, which, by the way, now has over 900... It's about 900 members, right, on Facebook? I don't even know. It grows huge every day. We get a lot of people asking questions, a lot of people trying this for the first time, and one of the biggest things that they say is, it's been sitting in there for three weeks. What do I do now? And then we always say, everybody in there says, did you take a hydrometer reading? No. Okay. Without that, we can't really help you all that much. We're not there. We don't know. What so Brian is trying to say is that the hydrometer readings give you so much more information than simply what alcohol content is right. in your brew. Right. I mean, you know, taking an OG, an original gravity and a final gravity is great for finding out your, your alcohol by volume, which is awesome. It's good to know. It's nice to know. You know, it's kind of a proud thing to say, yeah, I made a 12% or I made a 14 It's nice to be able to say that, but that's not the end all. It's really more important to know, like, okay, it stopped bubbling. Bubbles aren't really a sign of anything other than something happened, but we don't know what. It means something could have happened two weeks ago and now it stopped. So if we don't know what the actual hydrometer reading says, how much sugars are really left, we can't know. Did it get stuck? Is it finished? What's it, what's going on? Like uh, we just did a video on Crazen Mead and I would have thought it was totally done. Turns out it was a little stuck. It, it kind of just wasn't working as fast as I wanted it to. I didn't know that. Until I used one of these. Otherwise, I would have just thought it was done. Meanwhile, not so much. So anyway, this video is about how to read one and, and not really why to use one. But I just wanted to get that out there that it's important too. These things, I don't know who designed it, but the gauge on this, it really doesn't make a lot of sense, okay? But let me explain the basics. Right here, I'm hoping you can see that, is 1.000, which is basically neutral or water, okay? And you guys might see me bouncing back and forth. I might just try to keep the B camera going on this just so you can really read this. Pardon me if I move a little bit. Might have a little bit of a shaky hand today. But 1.00 is considered neutral or pure water. As it goes further, we go to 0.990, which is lighter than water, okay? As it starts going this direction, we're getting denser than water. In other words, if you add sugar to something, it starts to become more dense than water. Thereby, the hydrometer will float to a different level. All the way up to, this one goes to 1.160. Yours might vary. They might go a little bit higher, a little bit lower. In general, 1.160 is super, super high for a gravity reading, and you probably won't go there very often, except for maybe some sack meads, things like that. But here's where the confusion comes in. If I turn this a little bit, see this? Alcohol by volume. First, that's bull. Uh, it's, they're lying to you. That is only under perfect conditions. If it goes to exactly 1.000 every time, then that is your potential alcohol. So if you stick your hydrometer in and it goes up to that one, don't think for a second that that's really at 10% alcohol. We've actually had people think that, that they just made a must and dropped the hydrometer in as 10% alcohol. Yeah, these things are confusing. I don't know why they designed it the way they did. Don't go by that scale at all. Then over here, we have the brick scale. This is a completely different unit of measurement than specific gravity. It's similar, it's a whole different way of doing it. I'm not gonna get into it because quite honestly, I don't understand it. I don't use it. I use specific gravity. We come around this way and see that right there? Spagur at 60F. I think there's a meme out there about that now. That's specific gravity at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, a little word about the temperature. Yes, this is graduated and measured and what's the word? Calibrated. Calibrated. To work best at 60 degrees. Okay, so that means your brew should be 60 degrees. Well, here's the thing. 
I have checked this and even a 30 degree sweep is like half a point of specific gravity. It just doesn't mean a thing. Or I'm sorry, it was five points of specific gravity, I think. It doesn't mean that much. These are not the most precise of instruments, so you're bound to be off by a point or two anyway. The only time we found that this to be an issue for us is if we did have a brew that was warmer than that amount and we had questions on whether it was working or not, if it, or if it yeah. got stuck right away. And then we found that the reading that we took to check on it ended up higher yeah. than before. That shouldn't happen, but it was because of the temper to, uh, yeah. temperature. Yeah, so it can, it can throw you off by a few points. So like very early on in a fermentation, you could get potentially a higher reading the day after you start a fermentation than the day you made it, potentially. It's not a, not a normal occurrence. But anyway, so that's the specific gravity. That is the scale we want to use. It starts at 0 0.990, goes to 1.000. Up here, you see 1.100. So that means everything in between that is the tenths leading up to that. So this is where a lot of people get confused and why they wrote it this way, I don't know. They could have just made this say 1.010, 1.020, 1.030, and so on, all the way to 1.090, then 1.100. Then after that, we have the tenths after 1.100 or 1. Point, actually, they're hundredths, not tenths. I keep saying tenths. Ignore the tenths. They're hundredths. So it's 1.100, 1. 1.110, 1. 1.120, 1. 1.130, 1. right? So that's your basics right there. Then it goes even further, and there's little lines in here. Each of those lines is two. So in other words, right after the 1.000, the first little tiny line over here is 1.002, okay? So then you go two, four, six, eight, all the way to 1.010. Yeah, I know, this is a lot of numbers and it's probably kind of confusing. You just have to remember that the smallest numbers are the little lines then you have the larger, the next number over, then you have the main number. So... <sighs> it's also, there's always four digits. Yeah, there's always four digits. This is where a lot of people get messed up. I see a lot of people giving me like a, oh, my final reading was 1.02. Okay, I think you meant 1.002, because I've had people say 1.09. I go, that's not a final reading, that's a starting reading. So... We get it. These things are not simple to read, and there's a, a little bit of difference between them two, which makes it even harder, but that's the gist. You basically have to add these numbers together. 1.0, like say it's 1.114, it's 1.00 plus 10 plus the two lines makes it 1.000, 1.010, 1 1.014. Okay, so that's where you'll hear people say 1014 also is another way to do it. I do that a lot, and I'm sorry if that confused people. It's it just, confuses me. It's just an easier way to say it sometimes. Um, we forget the point and we just give the four digit number. Because it's always a four digit number, that works. Except for 990. It's the only one. 0990 doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, something else to think about. When you drop this into a liquid, you want to make sure that it's been degassed, at least to some extent, because the bubbles will actually reduce the density of a liquid and make this float a little bit wrong. Um, you want to spin it a little bit to get them off of it, and then you want to read it right at the line of the water. Water tends to do that, you know, where it kind of goes up towards the sides of things. Don't read it there. You want to read it here. See the difference? It could be that much different. Well, it won't be that much difference, but it could be a couple points. <coughs> I'm fine. It could be a couple points difference from where the actual level of the water is to that little rise up where it kind of clings to things. Um, that's the basics of reading a hydrometer, guys. I wish I could explain it a lot more clearly. I, I wish that they didn't make them so weird, but that's the gist. If anybody has questions, don't be afraid. Ask in the comments. If you're part of our group, ask in the group. Nobody's going to pick on you, because if they do, I'll come after them. And a lot of people are asking those questions, so it's, you won't be alone. Um, I had a lot of trouble trying to read it at first, and sometimes I'll look at it and go, what? And I have to really look at it to figure out what numbers I'm looking at. And I do this all the time. So don't feel bad. They're just weird. 
whoever whoever made these up ought to get sacked. They should bring in llamas to make them instead. Well, if they're using the same graph that the original creator made, then he's probably dead. Yeah, 1870-something. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys for today. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want to learn to grow and brew and take control of your food, hit the subscribe icon down below and don't forget to hit that little bell. That way you get notified of everything we do. And if you really like what we do, consider becoming a patron. Information in the descriptions of all of our videos. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. I think we got it. Alright. So... Galileo! Galileo! Galileo Figaro! Whenever I see these things, it reminds me of the Galileo scale thing. Oh. Because they're weights yeah, that just, float. Yeah. They call them hydropters for a reason. They're like the most fragile thing ever made. I didn't break it. No, you did not. <laughs>